Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Looks like it's going to be another good day in the shop today. As promised, we're going to continue working on a set of fireplace tools and we're going to work on a shovel. I've already made a shovel pan here just to have one to, to show at this point, but we're going to make this from scratch and show you how I get here, offer some options on how to cut it out and some options on how to shape it. When we did our poker the other day, we made our handle and poker all out of a single piece of about 24 inches of material is what we ended up using. Now for a shovel to be the same length of a, as the poker, we're obviously going to need a little bit shorter handle and I try to make these match and I always try to start by making the poker so I have this piece defined. Then when it comes time to do the shovel, I can trim the shovel handle to the right length and we'll do all of that. I'm not going to show making the handle portion. This is exactly the same procedure. It didn't come out looking quite exactly the same finished product, but they're clearly going to be a set. They go together well enough. So I already did this. You can go back and watch Forging the Poker to see how that was done. But right up to this point, it's all the same, and we'll pick it up here after we do the shovel pan. So I keep a, uh, a pattern. This is something that hangs on the wall. This is about 7 inches by 5 and a half inches, and I like to use 16 gauge material. And we'll see if we can get two of these out of this little scrap of material here. This is a place where your silver pencil really makes a good mark. Although this rusty sheet metal grinds the point of the pencil down in no time. Let's see if there's enough room here to get two. And there isn't quite. So we're just going to get one out of this and we'll do something else some other time with that scrap. So how are we going to cut this out? When we did the candle holder project we discussed several methods of cutting that out and those are all good methods for working on this today. Our main thing though I want to emphasize is cutting sheet metal with a chisel. One of our most recent videos I made this cold chisel specifically to use to cut this out and I think that's a real good way to go so let's start by doing it that way. I'm going to cut this out right on the anvil but I want to be very careful not to cut all the way through. It's hard on the anvil, it's hard on your chisel. So try to avoid going too far. If we're going to cut all the way through I'll put a, a piece of scrap on here. You just want to work the chisel and you can rock it and leave part of it in the cut as you work forward. In this case you don't have to be perfect to the line, it's helpful if you are, but these always need a little bit of filing or grinding when you're done anyways. I like to go around in a couple of light passes. It keeps things even and it keeps the deformity down a little bit. I'm also going to make a relief cut right here to make it easier to break this off later. Because this is fairly thin, we aren't going to have to do a whole lot of chiseling here. 
Certainly you could have these cut with a plasma cutter. Pay to have somebody do it, or if you own a plasma cutter, you can do it with a plasma cutter. It's, it's doable. But why go out and buy a plasma cutter just to do a few handful of little projects like this? Time is money, but also spending your time can save you a lot of money. And by taking 10 minutes to cut this out by hand, you don't have to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on a plasma cutter. Cutting it with a cutting torch would be doable, but that would really leave a lot of cleanup. Again, if you're going to do 20 or 30 or more of these in a batch for sale, paying somebody else to plasma or water jet cut them might very well be worth it. Worth it. But for just one or two, there's absolutely no reason you can't do this with a chisel. And I realize watching me chisel this is relatively boring, but you'll get to see the real time what it, this really takes. And I think it's important to realize just how long this really takes. The edge on our chisel is holding up nicely. You don't have to cut all the way through this. We're going to break most of this off. But I am going to cut all the way through my relief cut, so I'll put a piece of mild steel under the chisel. Now we should be able to just put this in the vise and rock that back and forth and stress that, that piece off there. And that's why you don't have to cut all the way through. This isn't that hard to do. And we're going to have to do some filing and grinding on it after it's done because it never comes out perfect unless you're doing this in some sort of a pressed die and I never do because I don't have that kind of a die. This is a pretty big section to break. But it's going to go nonetheless. So I don't know how long that took us. Not too long. They say it's a little ragged, but it's a shovel blank. And we can clean this up now, but we'll have to clean it up again later, so I think it, we might as well just go ahead and forge this, and we'll show you how to shape it. But first, let's talk about a few other ways we could have cut this. You can do this under the treadle hammer. much more efficient way to chisel and I get much more control. I can see this better and I can control because I've got both hands. Make sure you have a chain stop or some other positive stop so that this head can't come down if this chisel kicks out you don't want to squish your hand. We can cut this on a Beverly shear. 
very fast, and this is the way I typically do them because I have the Beverly shear. And it will follow a curve. But again, that's a fairly expensive tool that you don't need to go buy just to do one or two if you have a cold chisel. You can also use a bandsaw. In this case, it's a little Milwaukee Porta band. Unfortunately, this saw won't turn that tight of a corner, so you've got to kind of work your way into it. Not really a big deal. Just a reminder, on the cold chisel, the edge is a little bit rounded, the corners in particular are rounded, and that helps you follow a curved line. If this chisel's straight, you just leave all sorts of dings and gouge marks. And a narrower width chisel will follow a tighter line, and a wider width chisel follows a, a bigger radius. Now you could work some of this cold if you anneal the material first, but it's going to stress harden and you can run a risk of cracking it. If you do too much work cold, you'll have to keep annealing it, letting it cool. So I prefer to just work it hot for the most part. I do a little bit of the final cleanup cold, but that's about it. So let's get it in the form. We have the same options for shaping this as we did our candle holder pan. And we're going to start with the simplest option, which is a wooden stump. What we want in the long run, we want this outer edge to curl up. So what we're doing is working that down. We're actually kind of drawing that out. And because it's getting longer, this edge has to go somewhere. This will take three or four heats, but it's starting to get some shape. We want to keep the back kind of flat. So this just kind of looks the same over and over again until you get a shovel. I'm using a fairly broad ball peen hammer so I can get in there. A cool morning, so this is a nice little fire to warm your hands by. I'm just trying to keep the back flat. I'm not trying to flatten out all the work we've just done here. We can do a little bit on edge, but not too much. Our next option that we have is the bottom of an oxygen cylinder. This is a nice deep one with nice smooth surfaces. For the stump, if you actually gouged or hollowed somehow, you can use woodworking tools and adds, even, even an axe, an angle grinder with a flap disc, and made it more hollow, the stump would work better. But since I don't use my stump for, for this purpose most of the time, I'm not going to do that. Try to keep wrinkles from forming. As you can see, this works a lot faster than the stump does. It's also a lot noisier. So we're making more progress. Going to be a certain amount of fussing and fiddling and 
back and forthing with this to get a good looking shovel out of it. Really, this is a functional shovel, as ugly as it is, we can make that work, but I think we can do way better. And it comes time to start trying to make it symmetrical. This is really kind of lopsided and off center right now. Do a little bit of work here. That's getting a lot closer to what we want. This is about ready to go to the anvil and try and clean some of this up on the flat of the anvil. But you can do quite a nice job with just this cylinder base. I got this one from a blacksmith tailgate sale. So you might be able to find one from another blacksmith, but if you check your local welding supplier, they're the ones that decommission cylinders, take them out of service, and they may have an old cylinder you can cut in half. And they may actually have the base they've already cut off of one. A lot of people take the tops to make bells out of, so there are more bases out there than there are tops. Somebody asked me if I could try this camera angle at the anvil to better show what I'm working on, so we'll give it a try. Work some of this over the edge of the anvil like that. And work this way. It's just a matter of finding the right shape to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. This is about to the point where it's going to be easier to work cold. It gets to be real fiddly in the tongs, and once it cools off, you can hold it in your hand. So I'm going to let this cool, and we'll, we'll clean it up a little bit after it's cold and get the final final shape. This is still kind of funky in here. Pretty happy with this side though. I don't know if this particular swedge block is still available, but it's an awfully handy swedge block. It probably weighs about 30 pounds. It has bowls and ladles on one side and it just happens to have a nice shovel form on the back side. The name on there is Lawrence. I just looked in the Blacksmith's Depot catalog and they don't carry anything quite like this. Uh, Pay Tool or Centaur Forge might and they're probably available on the used market. But this does make a fairly uh, simple job of it. You can go slowly Try to do this all in one big blow, you're going to end up with wrinkles that are way harder to get out. But this is what I usually use. It just takes a couple of heats and you get a much more regular shovel out of it. One final option is a a form like this that works a little bit opposite of what we've been doing. You put a your blank in here, you clamp it down so that the bottom of the shovel stays put. And then you 
heat the edge up with a torch and slowly work it around. It's real easy to get bends and folds, so you have to be methodical and careful not to do that. And then you're really upsetting this edge to get it to fold up just right. I've never used this. It's one I got at a blacksmith raffle. Uh, I think we'll do a separate video on it. I'll figure out what this blank looks like because it's completely different than the one I usually do. So we'll do this as a whole separate video and figure out together how to use this. You can come along on my journey of exploration. So this pan is cooled off enough that I can touch it. And we can work it cold now up to a point. If you go too much it'll start to work harden and you can crack it. Keep looking at it, try to keep it even. Now it's just almost never a perfect surface on an anvil for this, so an anvil block isn't bad. It's a good place for hearing protection because that is really loud. So that's getting a lot closer. Work out any lumps and bumps. This is nothing but a trailer ball. Off your trailer hitch. You weld a square shank to it. I haven't done that. I need to. It would be a lot better. And that will help you get into places like this. I'm worried about the inside profile, the angles, making sure this is flat. If this is a little higher than the other side, I can grind that off. You can also work it this way. But I think that's all I'm going to do right here. This is a place where this squared off horn on the uh, double horn anvil can really come in handy. But you don't need one. It's not that important. Just if you have the tools, you might as well use them. I went ahead and took this to the grinder and evened up the sides and took off any rough spots. Make sure it's round. People aren't going to handle this end of the shovel a lot, but you don't want sharp edges, so kind of ease these over and kind of round them up just a little bit. The exact shape of this pan is entirely up to you. Mine is this shape because it's pretty much what my little swedge block does, so that's what I start with, although this one wasn't done under the swedge block. So it's a little bit more parallel than the, the swedged ones usually end up looking like. Doesn't really matter. It's your shovel. Make it the shape you want. They can flare. They can be hourglass shape. Certainly hourglassing is going to be a lot more difficult to do on a stump or a oxygen cylinder. But if you make one of those vice mounted torch jigs, that might not be so hard to do. You could even make a jig that works under the fly press or the hydraulic press, but I've never done that. So, we now have a shovel pan, and we want our shovel to be the same length as our poker. So we know that in the long run, we want this shoulder to come out about there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on our handle. So I'm going to put a little bit more of a neck in this. 
And it, you know, this doesn't really matter. If this is a little short, nobody's going to care. So I'm going to continue my taper down into this area, and then we're going to make a finial or a pad, whatever you want to call it, that will have some rivets to mount to the shovel. So we're just extending our taper, but I'm going to leave a little bit of a shoulder here. Similar to what we did when we did the poker, but not quite exactly the same. This has a heavy chamfer on the edge, so I'm going to do that. Now none of this is absolutely critical to the making of a shovel. I'm just making this shovel as part of a set to go with that poker. You can use any other handle style you want. So this isn't absolutely critical just to do a shovel. This little shovel is actually has the pan forge welded to the end and it's very crude. It's been burned up in the forge several times. This embarrassing thing has also been burned up in the forge. I put this in the forge with small parts to heat them up quite often so it's been brought up to red heat hundreds of times probably and it's burning out at the edges. But this is the first shovel I ever made. And this is just a, a simple flat with a couple of rivets to hold it. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. So we're still experimenting with camera angles here. And we're cleaning this, just cleaning this up. Notice that my, my hammer is in line with the edge to create this shoulder right here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to point this. I think there's enough heat left. And that'll just make for a more graceful ending when we are all done with this. So now we're going to flatten that out and make a tab that will secure to the shovel. So all we're doing now is just creating a, a half face blow hammer, half on, half off, and we're going to thin this out. This makes kind of a little spear point. I've seen people do these as leaves. And you want that to be a fairly parallel piece at this point. Needs a little bit more heat. But you can kind of see what we're going for there. We just need a little cleanup on this, make it graceful. Make sure you don't have a thick spot through here. It's really easy to leave that too thick and make it too thin here. And then the side that is up as we do our half face blows will be the outside of the shovel. So I'm going to put a little bevel on there just to make it look better. Now because the back of our shovel pan comes almost straight up, we want this thing bend almost straight down. That's pretty close. Look at it and get an idea where it bends under the shovel. We'll be able to do some adjustment on this cold or with a torch a little bit later. But we want that to fit the shovel. And that's getting pretty darn close. Real easy to twist this a little bit, so check it and get it back in line if it's twisted.
And it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to let this cool and then we're going to join these two pieces together and it'll be a shovel. Well, it looks like once again I've forgotten to turn the little lapel mic on, so I apologize for that. One of these days I'll learn to do that every time. The shovel handle fits the back of the blade, and it looks like it's a pretty accurate fit. If it needs some adjustment, you can do some of that adjustment cold or heat it up very gently with a torch right where it needs it. But this doesn't look like it needs anything at this point. We're going to go ahead and drill the first rivet hole and use that rivet hole with the handle riveted to the shovel blank to line up the second hole. I just eyeball center of the, the blank here for my, my rivet. I feel like I can get that accurate enough. Put a little center punch mark in it. And we can take this to the drill press or we can do it with a hand drill. You could even punch this cold if you really wanted to. I'm going to hold this by hand under the drill, but I know that I, the belt slips so badly on this old drill press that I can get away with this if it catches. If you don't know that you can get away with it, don't do it. Find a way to clamp it or hold it in the vise and use a hand drill. That looks like I forgot to turn the sound on again. Sorry about that. We're going to line that up, center of the, the handle with the center of the rivet hole, and make a little pencil mark that we can come back and find with our center punch. And let's drill a matching hole there. With the first hole drilled, I want to go ahead and mark my second hole and drill it. And I will use the second hole as my guide for where to drill the hole in the pan after we set the first rivet. I'm using 3 16 inch rivets, they're just round head rivets. These are half inch long, you want about one and a half times the rivet diameter sticking out the back. You have to try and get this on a rivet header so that it can sit flat, which is one reason I use these rivet headers in a Pritchell hole. Let's see if that gives you a better view without my arm in the way there. And you need to start with this fairly lined up, but it's not real critical because it's going to be loose for a little bit. We'll start setting the head. Make sure everything's going down nice. It's a good time to check your lineup. And you can use a top riveting tool. This rivet's actually going to be a little short for that. Or you can just do it all with the hammer. Work the edges down. Try to keep it lined up. We did a pretty good job of getting this to match. If it doesn't match perfectly, you can heat this up with a torch and work out the, the lumpy spots. So now we'll drill the other hole. You can certainly drill this under the drill press. This is really easy to get to and you've got a good handle to hold on to. Or you can drill it with a hand drill. You don't have to have a drill press. Deburr the hole, make the rivet easier to get in. Then back to the anvil and we'll set that rivet. I put the factory head of the rivet in the shovel pan where it's a little bit prettier to look at. Doesn't hurt to come back and Snug up the first rivet just a little bit, since we moved that around a little bit. And that is an assembled shovel. 
So that's all of the forge work for the shovel unless you need to make some adjustments. If the shovel is off this direction you can heat it up with a torch right here and very gently bend it and get this straight in line. The other thing is what angle do you want here? I like it to kick up just a little bit the way this one does but if you want it perfectly flat you can do that. And again you'd heat it up here and you'd bend it just a little bit until it's just right. So what's the last thing we're going to do with this? Well, it's the last thing I always do. We're going to put a little bit of wax on it to make it look pretty and then we're going to highlight the the twist there some. Now because I did some grinding on that torch, uh, shovel pan, I want to bring that up to a dull red heat, which is way hotter than it needs to be just for waxing. But that camouflages the grind lines and makes it all turn an even color. I'm going to turn that around. Remember, that's hot. Use tongs. Get the handle hot. It doesn't need to be up to a red heat. That's really about all the time that takes to be hot enough to wax. So let's let that cool for a few minutes, then we'll wax it. Yeah, let's see if this has cooled off enough. It's been about five minutes. It's just right on the edge of being hotter than I like to wax it, but not too bad. you get the whole thing. The little dry spots look bad. off any excess. If it's too hot to hold on to with the hot mail gloves, it's definitely too hot to wax. So there we have a fireplace shovel. It's a nice, light, well-balanced shovel. Should be easy for people to get into the fireplace or the wood stove to scoop out the ashes. It just happens to be a pretty darn good match for our poker. We may have been almost exact here. We're at 32 inches for the poker overall and 31 and a half for the shovel. Yeah, we missed it by half an inch. I think that's okay. I think if one has to be a little longer, it's better if the poker is the longest tool. And it really, in some sets, doesn't hurt for the shovel to be even shorter. But that just depends on what you want things to look like. I think a fireplace shovel is an excellent gift idea for the upcoming holidays. It can go with the poker. It can be a standalone item depending on who you're going to give it to and whether they already have a poker but need a shovel. You can take one of these camping with you. Use it to shovel coals up on top of the Dutch oven when you bake that cherry cobbler. That's a lot of fun. Wood stove. This is also a shop tool. If you're burning a solid fuel forge, coal, charcoal, propane, you're going to need a shovel to put fuel in the forge and to clean out the ashes. So you may need to make three or four of these things before you're all done. So that's it for the shovel. But look what I found. I have an extra handle. You want to know what we're going to do with that? You're going to have to tune in to the future video. Probably won't be the next one, but probably before the 
the end of next week anyways, maybe in a couple of days, we'll do something with this handle and we'll make this into a three-piece set of fireplace tools. In the meantime, I would love it if you'd give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below. At some point, this set of tools, when they are completed, they will be available in my Etsy shop, and a link should show up to that here shortly if you're shopping for tools. If you'd just like to give a small donation to support the YouTube channel, there's a link in the description down below, and you can give a PayPal donation. Absolutely no requirement. The content is free, as always. A gratuity is just a way to show your appreciation and to help support the effort. Get out to the shop. Make something. Have fun. Practice your skills. Stay safe. Wear your safety glasses. And we'll see you tomorrow.